ladies and gentlemen. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Angeles, California. I work here. I'm a cop. It was warm in Los Angeles. We were working the night watch out of robbery division. The boss is Captain Didion. My partner's Frank Smith. My name's Friday. We'd gotten a call that a doctor had been slugged in a downtown hotel. The assailant had escaped. We had to find him. Six p.m. We reached the hotel at the corner of Pembroke and Columbia Streets. We talked with one of the officers in the radio unit that answered the call. He told us that his partner was out checking the neighborhood. We talked with the ambulance attendant, and he told us that the cut on the victim's head was not serious. The victim identified himself to us as Dr. Aaron R. Platt. We asked him what had happened. That's hard to answer, sir. It's hard to tell you what happened. I'm not too sure about it myself. If you'd tell us what you do know, sir. I received a call tonight that a woman was ill. Who'd the call come from, Doctor? It came through my call service. What time was this, Doctor? Well, it must have been about 7.45. My call service would have a record of it. You can get in touch with them. You ever seen these people before? No. So anyone tell us what happened? As I told you, I got a call from my service. Gave me this address and the room number. What'd your call service tell you? Trust said that a woman needed a physician. I came right over. All right, would you go ahead? Well, when I came into the hotel, I checked with the room clerk downstairs and asked about Mr. and Mrs. Allen. He told me they were in this room. Allen, huh? Mm -hmm. That's the name they gave me. Mm -hmm. I came up, knocked on the door, and Mr. Allen opened it. Huh. I suppose that's his real name to you. Well, we'll check on it, Doctor. Be a little silly to give the real name and then do a thing like this. Yeah. What happened after the man let you into the room? Well, I told him who I was, and he said that his wife was ill. Where was she? Lying in the bed, all covered up. I went over to her and asked her what was wrong. What'd she say? Nothing. She moaned a little. Then her husband, I guess that's who he was, told me that it was her side. So that she'd had a pain all evening. Yeah. He asked me if I thought it might be appendix. I told him there are a lot of other things that cause pain in the side beside appendix. Mm -hmm. I went over to the bed to take the woman's temperature. That's when the man locked the door. Sir? I heard this noise. I turned around and saw the man turning the night latch on the door. I asked him why he was doing that, and he told me he didn't want us to be disturbed. At the time, I, I thought it was a little strange, no reason to lock the door, but, but he had a reason. He had one. Yeah. After that, I went over to the woman again and reached out for the thermometer. All of a sudden, she jumped up out of bed, jumped at me. I turned around to ask what this was all about. And I saw the man. He had a gun standing right behind me. And I saw him start to swing the gun. And then, well, that's the last I remember until I came to. I called the police. That's it. You never saw these people before? No. No, I remembered if I did. Do you have any idea why they'd call you? No. No, the man said something to the girl on the board of my call service. You can check with her. Oh, I wonder if I could have a cigarette. Sure. Thanks. Get out of my coat, please. Yes, sir. Thanks, sir. Oh, that's funny. What's that, sir? My lighter. It's gone. Solid gold. Present for my wife. I'd hate to lose that. <laughs> the top opens up when you spin the flint thing, you know? Yes, sir. How about your other personal effects? What was that? Your other effects, doctor. Your wallet, your money. <laughs> gone. Gone everything. The thieves, they robbed me. That's what they did. I don't mind the money, only thirty, forty dollars, but the cards in my wallet. Rotten thieves. Look here. What's that, sir? My watch. They even took my watch. Automatic. It was a good one. My wife gave me that too. Can you give us a description of these articles? Well, I certainly can. I've got the case and movement numbers at the watch in my office. I can give you that. You want a complete description of the man and woman too, Doctor. Well, I gave one to the other officers. Yes, sir, but we'd like to go over it with you. Oh, all right. Say, wait a minute. Yes, sir. My bag, do you see it? What's that, sir? My doctor's bag. Must be in the room someplace, unless they took that too. Just sit still, doctor. We'll look for it. Joe. Yeah. Here it is. I bet he wouldn't touch that, doctor. 
Well, I want to see what's in it. You mind moving some of those things, please? Sure. Answer right. so what's all there. That's what they took, all right. All of it. What's that, Doctor? Narcotics. 8.59 p.m. We got a complete description of the pair of suspects, and Frank and I called them into the office. R and I had no record of anyone by the name of Timothy Allen answering the description that we'd been given. 9.03 p.m. We talked to the desk clerk. He was unable to give us any information on the pair. He said that the couple had come in earlier that evening and had paid for the room in advance. He went on to say that they carried one piece of luggage. We looked at the registration card. It was signed with the name Mr. and Mrs. Timothy Allen and gave us an address, St. Paul, Minnesota. The registration card was held as evidence to be checked by Don Meyer in handwriting. We called the crime lab and a crew of men were sent out to go over the hotel room for possible physical evidence. 9.27 p.m. We went back to the office and got out a local broadcast and an APB on the pair of suspects. A radiogram was sent to the police department in St. Paul asking for information on the couple. 9.30 Dr. Platt was asked to come to the office and go through the mug books. A call was put into Narcotics Division to see if the officers there had any information on the thieves. Officer Roxy Lucarelli said that he checked their files to see if he could come up with any leads for us. In the meantime, the stats office had started to run on the M.O. used in the crime. You got anything? No, Roxy's going to check it. Says he's never heard of the man and woman. They're new to him. Yeah, how about the numbers on the vials? Yeah, there's a broadcast out of them. They'll be listed in tomorrow's bulletin. Dr. Poplin, anything? No, he's still checking. Well, if he doesn't find them, we can take him over to crime analysis. Maybe have a composite drawn up, huh? Yeah. Hot shot. I'll get it. I got it. Dr. Slugged and Rob. Ten fifteen p.m. We arrived at the scene of the latest beating. We talked to the victim, a Dr. Aubrey Baker. The story we got from him was substantially the same as the one Dr. Platt had given us. A call had been put out by a man who gave his name as Alan, saying that his wife needed immediate treatment. Upon the doctor's arrival, the door to the room had been locked, and the doctor had been beaten and robbed of his personal effects and supply of narcotics. The description the doctor was able to give us was the same as the one we'd gotten before. 10.47 p.m., we talked with the desk clerk at the hotel. The description he gave us of the Allen couple matched the one that we had. A check of the registration card showed that the handwriting was the same. We spent the rest of the night running down the leads we had. The stats office had come up with four possibles. They were checked out, but they netted us nothing. For the next two nights, Frank and I stayed in the field in the hopes of apprehending the pair of thieves. During that time, they hit three times. All of the victims were doctors. Each time, the entire supply of narcotics was taken. Monday, June 22nd, 10 p.m. Frank and I checked into the office. There was a message that Captain Didion wanted to see us. Hi, Joe. Frank. Kipper. Heard from St. Paul yet? Yeah, I got a radiogram about an hour ago. I got no record on the pair back there. How about the operation? New to them. Mm -hmm. How about this deal you set up? You want to go over it? Yeah, you know, the way we got it figured, this couple's new. Either they just got into town or else they just decided to get a piece of narcotic action in town. Where'd you get that? We talked to Roxy Lucarelli over at Narcotics. Yeah? He's talked to the other fellows in the office. None of them have heard of this kind of operation before. It's new to them, too. Uh -huh. How about informants? The couple are selling the stuff. There's got to be some rumbles around about it. Well, it doesn't seem to work out that way, Skipper. Roxy says they haven't heard anything about it. This Allen couple must be building up a supply before they start to unload it. Yeah. We had the artist over at Crime Analysis draw up a composite picture of the couple. It's been sent out to all the doctors in the area. When did it go out? Mailed over the weekend. Should have happened this morning. Who'd you send it to? All the general practitioners, internists, physicians, and surgeons in the area. Got a list of names from the AMA. They're going to give us all the help they can. We sent out about 1,500 of the osteopaths in the area. They're going to cooperate. All right. Waysmith tells it whenever one of these doctors gets a call to a hotel and it's not a regular patient, they're going to call you. Is that it? Yeah, that's right. And then we can get in touch with the clerk at the hotel and get a description of the people making the call. The doctor waits for us at the desk, and if the couple looks like possible, so we'll go with them. Looks like the long way around. Yeah, that's about the only way we got, though. How many men are you going to need to help cover it? One other team should do it. Uh, you're only going to roll on the calls where the description matches? Yeah. Okay. Rafferty and Murphy will work with you on it. Be a team out of the business office if you need any more help. 
Okay, Skimmer. What are you getting from narcotics? Well, they got four men on it, running down leads on the dope. They got the serial numbers on the vials. The way Captain Shy tells it, they try to push a single cap of the stuff and they'll nail them. Well, looks good. Hope it works out. Yeah, so do we, Skipper. Robbery, did he? Yeah, just a minute. For you, Friday. Thank you. Friday talking. Yes, sir. Yes, that's right. Who's speaking, please? Dr. Adams? Yes, sir. I see. What's that address again? Yes, I have it. Do you have a phone number? Fine. 416? Yes, sir. All right, we have it. Yes, we know where that is. Right. That's correct. Right. Thank you. Bye. Well, looks like it started. What do you got? It's a Dr. Adams. We'll know in a minute here if it means anything. This is Sergeant Friday, Los Angeles Police Department. Yes, that's right. Do you have a name on the couple in 416? Mm hmm. Could you describe them for me, please? No, no, there's nothing wrong. Now, just give us a description, would you please? Mm hmm. And the woman? I see. Okay. Right? All right, thank you very much, sir. No, no, it's all right. All right. Bye. How about it? Name's Alden. Description matches. Checking with the desk clerk at the hotel and talking with the doctor who had made the call, Frank and I went up to the room. The doctor went into the bedroom to see the woman patient. Frank and I talked to her husband, Kenneth Alden. Sure is nice of you fellas to be here, but I don't think there's any reason for it. It's all right. I should have listened to Helen. She said we shouldn't have come. Where are you from, Alden? Alden. Huh? I said, where are you from? Uh, Carthage. Missouri? Sure hope everything's all right. Yeah, Missouri. Either one of you know this Dr. Edmondson? No. Sure hope he knows what he's doing. Helen's kind of little, you know. Frail. Sure hope he knows what he's doing. How long have you and your wife been here? A week. A week tomorrow. I should have listened to Helen. She didn't think it was a good idea to come out here. I talked her into it. Said we should have a vacation. She was right. I don't know what I'll do if it's not all right. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you can say that. It's not your wife. I've been through the same thing. You have? Yeah, twice. Let me tell you, not a thing to worry about. Maybe not in a hospital, but here, a hotel room. I don't know. Believe me, son, it's going to be all right. I wish you'd let us know what's happening. Twice, huh? Yeah, boy and a girl. Helen wants a girl. Don't make much difference to me either way. Did it make a difference to you? Not really. I was kind of glad the person was a girl. Yeah, it'd be nice. But just as long as it's healthy, that's all that really counts. Awful quiet in there. It seems like we should hear something pretty soon. Take it easy. Yeah. I always thought they had to boil a lot of water. It seems like they always use a lot of hot water. I think that's to keep the husband busy, don't you? Give him something to do. Yeah. How old are yours? Girls eight, boys six. Oh, I read where that's ideal. Two years difference. It kind of helps the younger child problem. Helen and I want four. It's a nice family. Yeah. You see, she's from a family of six. I'm an only child, so we both feel that a big family's right. Yeah. Sure is quiet in there. You like me to go down and get some coffee? No, not for me. I don't want anything. Are we going to be able to take Helen to the hospital? That's up to the doctor, Alden. Yeah, I guess so. I guess it's up to him to say or not. Sounds like you're a father. Yeah. Congratulations. Same to you. Guess my troubles are over now. They're just starting. During the next few days, we got a dozen more calls. All of them proved false. However, during that time, the robberies continued. Despite our warnings, doctors continued to answer calls at hotels for people they didn't know. The amount of stolen narcotics grew larger. The outlet for the drugs still hadn't been found. On Friday, June 26th, we got a call from a Dr. Halbert. He told us that he'd gotten a call from a couple who gave their name as Alan. He asked us to meet him at the hotel. Well, how long ago 
did they call you, Doctor? About 25 minutes ago. Asked me to come right over. And that's when they gave you their names, did they? That's right. They ever treat them before? No, new to me. Think they're the people you're looking for? Well, we don't know. The description we got from the desk clerk matches the suspect. I'd rather you wait out here. It'd be better if we went in with you, Doctor. That may be your opinion. You're forgetting I'm a doctor. I want to help you catch the people you're after, but my first duty is to the patient. I'm not going to embarrass them by having police officers ask questions. We're here to take care of you, sir. Then do it from the hall. According to your bulletin, the man always locks the door, doesn't he? He has in the past. And that's how you can tell. He locks the door and then come on in. Right, if that's the way you want it, Doctor. That's the way it's got to be. All right, sir. We'll be right out here if you need us. I hope I won't. So do we. I'm Dr. Halpert. Shoot him. Dead. You killed him. We didn't call it, lady. How can you say that? You shot him in cold blood. He's just a kid. You didn't have to kill him. Better call him. Yeah. He was doing it for me. He was helping me and you killed him. He didn't know. He was just a kid. He didn't know what was going on. I told him what to do. I set it up. You come in here and kill him. I hope you're real proud of yourself, cop. Waiting at home, decided to put in the time here. Glad you did. He looks tired, doesn't he? He always looks that way to me. You're getting prettier every day, huh? Thanks, so are you. How's Faye? Fine. And how you doing, Joe? What you see in you? Got these reports out. We can go home. Long day? Yeah. You do look tired. A little bit. When you get through with your reports, I'll buy you both a cup of coffee. That's the best offer I've had all day. I'll take care of the shooting. You want to get the dead body report? Two seventy six South Pixel. Two six seven. Oh, Joe. Nine two seven six South Pixel. Yeah. Can't remember the DR number. One two seven five four six zero. I asked you this morning. You gave it to me. What's the matter? I'm just tired. Here, buddy, I'll finish that up. I'm sorry I came down here, Joe. I didn't think you'd mind. No, that's all right. I'll drop these off at Homicide on the way.
Hey, it's quitting time. You going on? I'll see you tomorrow. I'll take a rain check on that coffee, Ann. Good night. Good night, Frank. How many are you going to smoke at once, Joe? I guess I am a little tired. How old was he, Joe? What? The person he killed. How old was he? Why do you ask that? I'm not a policeman, Joe. But I heard Creasy and Stewart talking about the robbery call. What Frank said about the dead body report and the shooting. How old was he? much I can say. Nothing to make you feel better or make you forget about it. But Joe, you're in a special kind of job. I've been telling myself that, but it doesn't seem to help much. Did he have a gun? Yeah. Did he use it? Yeah. Well, doesn't that make a difference? Doesn't it matter that the only reason they're not filling out a report on you or Frank is that you were better at your job than that boy was at his? Remember the time you and I sat in the hospital waiting for Frank to come out of it? Remember? Yeah. Frank and I could be waiting for you tonight. Yeah. What's your reading on the pistol range? What? You get six dollars a month extra for marksmanship, don't you? Yeah. That's pretty good, isn't it? Is it? Joe, you could have missed if that was the way it was supposed to be. I've read where even a $12 shooter misses sometimes. I suppose so. Joe, I don't know who made the decision. But I'm glad it's the way it is. Now, come on. I'll buy you that cup of coffee. October 21st, trial was held in Department 98, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was tried and convicted of robbery in the first degree, which is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a term of not less than five years. A coroner's jury found that Edgar Cabell was killed while resisting arrest, and his death was listed as justifiable homicide.